Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games from Scratch, and today is a great day for a Blender user. Unless, of course, you're an Intel Mac user, which you may not love today. So what we've got, brand new version of Blender, specifically Blender 4.5. And honestly, this one is a bit of a big friggin' deal for a couple of reasons. First off, if you are using a Mac, this is the last version on Mac for Intel based CPU. So I know we've had M1s for about four or five years now. Well, it's the end of the road for Intel support because frankly, it just got, I think, too hard for them to go ahead and keep supporting it. But the other big new thing that we've got, you're actually kind of witnessing in action right now. And that is that we now have Vulkan on the back end. For years and years and years, we've used OpenGL, like three or four decades now. OpenGL has been the rendering graphic choice uh, since SGI first created it as Iris GL. And it's what Blender has used since the very beginning. But the march of hardware rolls on and the world of GPUs has changed a whole lot. We've got new things coming in like ray tracing. So you want to add ray tracing support going forward? Well, the new Vulkan will enable it. So we've got ray tracing now, but we're going to get better ray tracing. We're going to get real-time global illumination, those kind of things. But first, you're going to need to turn Vulkan on. To turn Vulkan on, what you do is you go into edit and then you go to preferences. And what you'll find is under system, there is display graphics and set back end to Vulkan. This will now require a reboot, by the way. Uh, and then once you've done that, you will now have Vulkan. Now, Vulkan is a bigger deal than just faster graphics up on screen. On top of that, it will actually enable you to do um, more polygons on screen, faster textures, faster shader compilation. Basically, it should just make things faster and smoother and open the door for new developments going forward into the future. Vulkan is a big deal. Now, you may also find that when you enable Vulkan, uh, it causes some issues because this is a pretty major change behind the scenes. So if you do find that, um, you know, give them a bit of time. This is going to be one of those things that is going to take a bit of work to get there. But Vulkan is definitely the big new feature here. But that is by no means the only new feature here. We've also got a number of changes to geometry nodes, for example. So here is a very simple sample scene. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a new mesh of type sphere into our world right there. And I'm going to add a geometry mode, geometry node modifier to it. This one is illustrating the new uh, set mesh normal feature here. And this is going to enable you to have two geometry node objects kind of interact with each other in the scene. Uh, and this is actually done. You see the mode free here. Uh, basically, there's no CPU cost for this is all being done with shader magic. So what I can actually do with this guy attached, I'm going to pick an object such as this guy over here. And now they will interact with each other based off normal. So watch this. So as I get close, See how the edges work? So there we see as we're going and dealing around. So let's, that's with this one. So again, normal behavior, new behavior. So you can see the edge, how they, they interact with each other. And what I can actually do is change that vector right there. So you can, uh, again, new new uh, option there called set mesh normal available. By the way, you're using geometry modes, nodes more and more and more. One thing you may want to do is bake one. So with this guy selected, I can actually come up here, go object, apply, uh, sorry, object, pick the right menu this time, apply, and you can actually go visual geometry to mesh. Uh, and then you'll see here, it actually cooked in the interaction between normals of the two objects. So if you want to bake out what you are doing with geometry nodes, you can easily do so. So let's go back to this guy. We'll re-add that up, uh, modifier so it comes back up. Another thing that you've got is when you're dealing with uh, geometry nodes here, we've got a bunch of new tools. One thing that I really like is this functionality right here. I can select a bunch of nodes and then hit F and then name it, say my objects, like so. And they will all be available inside of this frame, which I can move around together. And then if I say I wanna go ahead and move something out of a frame, you can grab it like so. So this will automatically move and resize the frame. But if I hold down F, I can pull that then outside of the frame accordingly, or I can hit F and add it to an existing frame. You can also nest frames and so on. By the way, you can also select the frame and hit X and delete it. Nice way to go ahead and organize things in your world. There's a couple other neat new features we've got here. I'll show you case in the world and in geometry nodes. So the first one we've got here is let's switch this over to the file browser. I'll go to my downloads folder. And what you're going to notice here is I've got a couple of OBJ files. So I'm going to control select them and drop them into my world. And what you're going to notice here is two objects just came in. Boom and boom. So you can now do multiple object drag and drop, which is really cool. But the cool thing here is we've also got the ability to do the same thing, but you can drop them into geometry nodes. Another thing you're going to notice with geometry nodes is, hey, they created these new nodes. So we now have these input uh, import object nodes available here as well. So I come down here, you're going to notice I've got 
a variety of them. So I could bring in a CSV file, STL, text files, VDB, Wavefront, uh, Polygon, and so on objects in. That is really cool. This new import functionality for geometry nodes, big improvement there. Now we've got a couple of other nodes that have been added as well. One of them is the camera info node, which is going to open up a whole new load of options there, especially because you can now get the projection matrix easily of the actual camera you are dealing with. In addition to geometry nodes, you will also find that the compositor has been kind of brought into sequence. So a lot of nodes have been renamed so that it's the same between the different uh, node networks, which is again, nice for consistency. Uh, then on top of that, we've had a number of improvements. Now this one I really like. So you're dealing with all these various different pieces of the uh, in the property view over here. You can actually come up right now here and turn off the things that you're not interested in. You're gonna notice they disappear. So if I don't want texturing, I can turn texturing off and it will hide it and I can turn it back on and so on. So all the things that you do or don't want to have display, you can now option them off there. Another thing you may notice is if you have say a Logitech mouse with a vertical and horizontal scroll, you can now use it here. So you see there, I'm just using my scroll thumb to scroll things quickly that way. And this applies to all of the various different windows. So here you can see uh, if I'm in say uh, the outliner here and things scroll off screen like this, I can actually scroll them again using that thumb wheel. It makes some use for that thing because I almost ever never actually use it for, well, pretty much anything. So that's definitely a nice improvement as well. Another thing we've got going on, so let me just go ahead and uh, start a new scene up here and we won't save anything. All right, so here we got this object in the world. I'm gonna go ahead and add another object in the world. So I'll say a sphere like that over there, I can actually take both of these objects and drop over here. So we're currently in object mode, by the way. And you'll notice here if I go to the uh, info viewer, so here, so see, we're getting the, the UV map here, or here, we're getting the UV map, or we can hit click both and get both of them. You don't need to drop into edit mode and select multiple. So you can now see multiple UV maps in uh, the UV layout and in the image editor with multiple objects selected. A very nice improvement there as well. So in our final demonstration, we're going to go over here to a default scene. You're going to see here with it selected, with shading on, I'm going to select the light. You move the light around the scene like so. I go to the light properties and you will notice several changes here. First off, we now have temperature available. Uh, you can change it out there. You can see the effects of temperature as I move that around. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. So there you can see. On top of that, we now have tint like this. And again, these work together. Uh, and then finally, you have uh, the exposure value available here as well. So we've got this update to how lighting works, the new temperature, tint, and exposure. Uh, yeah, so definitely another nice improvement there. There is much more here. We've had improvements to the FBX and GLTF imports. By the way, Colada, this is the last version for both Intel Max and for the Colada slash DAE file format. Not that I don't think very many people use that anymore, which is probably a good reason to go ahead and get rid of that. On top of that, we've had a number of animation improvements, such as, for example, slotted animations. Uh, and yeah, that's about it, but that's it for the hands-on portion. Hopefully you find uh, Blender 4.5 as interesting as I do. Obviously Vulkan is the big thing here. And let's finish this the way we, of course, always should. And that is with a sacrifice. Goodbye, default cube. All right, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.